Now, from the nation's capital, here's the Pentagon Channel's ATS in brief. The creator of the Doonesbury cartoon series has released his second book, focusing on the experiences of returning service members. And the profits are going to a charity that helps wounded troops and their families. In his daily and weekly comic strip, Gary Trudeau chronicles the life of a National Guardsman who comes back from Iraq as an amputee. The first book, The Long Road Home, centers on the first part of the recovery process. Now his latest installment, The War Within, depicts the ups and downs of the return to civilian life. The Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist wants the books to bring awareness to the sacrifices being made by the country's military. It's, it's important, um, you know, if you have, if you're given a, a, the platform that I've been given to, to try to bring those two worlds together to say, look, these, these guys are making some pretty heavy sacrifices and contributions in our name. And, and we should know a little bit more about them. The books are available through online retail stores. All proceeds from both books go to the Fisher House, a nonprofit organization providing free or low cost housing to military families while their loved ones are receiving medical treatment. Secretary Rumsfeld arrived in Montenegro Tuesday. He is the highest ranking U.S. visitor to the country since it became an independent nation earlier this year. He's discussing plans for the country's army to participate in the war on terror and training to NATO standards. From Montenegro to Albania, which has troops fighting alongside the U.S. in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Early Tuesday morning, Secretary Rumsfeld honored Albanian troops and their families for their contributions in the war on terror, but also told the Albanian people of the ultimate plan for rule and law in Iraq. I think they're making good progress, and I think they're going to achieve that goal. And I think what we'll see during this year is, is a continuation of passing over more and more responsibility to them. The defense secretary is now in Slovenia, where he will attend the NATO defense meeting and discuss violence in Afghanistan. They've been expecting it. Now a U.S. military spokesman says there's been an increase in violence in Iraq for the start of Ramadan. This has been a tough week. Over the past two weeks, we have seen a rise in the number of attacks, especially in Baghdad. The terrorist and illegal armed groups are punching back in an effort to discredit the government of Iraq and more specifically the Baghdad security plan. Major General William Caldwell says the increase in attacks was expected and troops were ready for it. He says as a result the enemy's attacks have not been effective. In Pennsylvania, the men and women of the 358th Civil Affairs Brigade are heading back to Iraq for a second time. Families and friends joined together for an emotional farewell Saturday before the unit boarded buses, taking them to Fort Bragg for two months of training. Admiral Gary Ruffhead, commander of Pacific Fleet, proudly told reporters this week about the work done during a four and a half month trip that took the traveling hospital USNS Mercy to some parts of the world where health care is needed. There were tens of thousands of immunizations given, prescriptions filled, thousands of pairs of eyeglasses were distributed, and more than a thousand surgeries were performed. Mercy visited four countries, the Philippines, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and East Timor. You can see more about Mercy's mission on Around the Services at pentagonchannel.mil. Around the Services, weekdays on the Pentagon Channel. When Super Typhoon Aoki roared across tiny Wake Island late last month, its 155 mile per hour winds did plenty of damage. An Air Force assessment team from Hickam Air Force Base Hawaii is now trying to add up the cost of the damage. Part of the final cost of reconstruction will depend on exactly what is done with the island. Restoring it to the way it was before the storm, fixing only the buildings that can be repaired, or using the island as an expeditionary airfield. It took 88 years, but Tuesday, a World War I soldier was laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. Private Francis Lupo was 23 years old when he was killed during heavy fighting with German forces in France. Private Lupo belonged to the 18th Infantry Regiment. His death and burial remained a mystery for years. Soldiers that buried him later on got killed themselves, and nobody knew where he was buried. In July 2003, some skeletal remains and a tattered wallet with the name Francis Lupo were accidentally unearthed in France. Private Francis Lupo is the first missing World War I service member to be recovered and positively identified. To find out how you can watch the Pentagon Channel where you live, contact Dish Network. TSP share prices for Thursday, September 27th opened at 11.57 for the G Fund, 11.02 for the F Fund, 1471 for the C Fund, 1723 for the S Fund, and 20 even for the I Fund. For the Pentagon Channel, I'm Army Sergeant Lee McMahon.